So, hit live on your Instagram browser. Let's do this. We are live. Awesome. All right, there we oh, go. Yeah. We are live. Well, welcome to our use us set the pace. Um, I am so excited. We have uh, incredible, inspiring people here. To, well, every Monday we do, but today we have our special guest, our chef Carla. Um, and we met a few years ago. It's been quite a while now, yeah, Carla. Yeah. We met. I did one of her courses in Miami. Five years ago. Yeah, even more. Even more. We met uh, in Miami. I did one of her raw dessert courses and fell in love with it. She's a friend of a friend, friend of Brent. So some of you know Brent. That's how I met Chef Carla. And he told me, hey, I have this Brazilian friend that makes the best dessert ever. So I thought, how perfect to bring her to talk about healthy dessert. You can you can have your dessert too, right? Yeah. Uh, and we have the incredible DJ too with us, so he will be here uh, most of Mondays, hopefully. Um, and we are going to cover not only um, talking about how you can add desserts into your routine, especially for our participants of the challenge, but also uh, about hydration. Again, we're going to bring hydration onto the topics as well because. Hydration is important. So, well, welcome everybody. And if you are with us on Instagram, YouTube, or uh, Facebook, thank you for being here. And we can interact with you on the comments on YouTube. Okay. All right. So, let's get started. Um, first, bringing a little bit of um, focus on desserts and sugar. This is a topic that DJ is gonna love. So let's see, um, we're doing a challenge for some of you that are here that are new. We're doing a metabolic reset challenge. And part of the challenge is also you being able to maybe enhance some of the nutrition habits that you have or maybe adhere to habits that you don't have yet. So we've shared a 30 day meal plan with a whole grocery list and recipes for people to be able to follow for 30 days. We are on day eight of the challenge. So we are officially in our second week and we've added a plank challenge for this week as well. So, and you will see some of my stories, some of our stories, you will see people planking, okay? So we are combining physical activity with nutrition and we added the meta power, which is the superstar um, that, that really helps us get to that space of resetting our metabolism. But a lot of that, I'll, I'll invite Carla, Chef Carla, to share a little bit of her story because it has a lot to do with sugar, yeah? Yes, for sure. So I've been eating mostly a raw vegan diet for 16 years now, and I have always had a sweet tooth. And the moment that I found out about raw vegan desserts, I fell in love. Um, I could not believe how amazing they tasted and how creative they could be. And it, it was just so simple in a way. And I was just mind blown and I just fell in love with it because really it's it made so much sense to stop eating so much processed foods. And I realized that my taste buds changed really quickly. So the moment that you remove processed sugar from your life, you might have a period where you struggle for a little bit, but you your taste buds really adapt quickly. And you start realizing that fruits are incredibly sweet, that you don't need to use a lot of nasty ingredients and you can make very clean food. So that was what really got me started and got me in love with raw foods. And now I use, my specialty is desserts. So I use only 
dates or dried fruits to sweeten my things, a little bit of maple syrup and coconut sugar. And they're, they're way more nutritious, but it really gets you to, to reduce the amount of sugar that you are consuming overall. And we know that sugar really feeds the bad bacteria in your gut. And I'm really passionate about gut health. So my whole journey started because my mom, who's a nutritionist, was going through somewhat of a tough time with depression. And she was fighting depression the traditional way. And then she went on a lecture by Dr. Brian Clement from Hippocrates Institute. And she learned about raw foods. She went on a 10-day cleanse on a different um, on a different place in Atlanta. And when she got back, she said that it was the first time in three years that she didn't feel like crying. And I thought that was so transformational because I saw who my mom was and what she had become. And back then, nobody was talking about the gut brain connection and how inflammation and just a poor diet can lead to so many mental issues also. So for me, that was really transformational. And to just be able to include nutritionally dense foods into your diet is key and start removing things that cause inflammation and feed bad bacteria. So sugar is a big one in that topic. And immediately I stopped eating sugar and started using just raw desserts as my, you know, to, to, to curb my sweet tooth. But I also noticed that once I balanced my microbiome, I don't even have that, the craving for sugar anymore. So I, I feel like I have such a healthy um, connection with food and with desserts nowadays. And it feels really good to not be so dependent on food and to really enjoy it for what it is and to not feel guilty because I know that I am adding nutrient dense things into my body. That is so awesome. I love Hippocrates and um, everything that he's brought into the nutrition that we now learn. Um, I did use also um, the Gerson Clinic. I did a lot of what they do is based on, on his teachings. And one of the things that I, I wanted to bring to this um, get together today was also re-educating your palate and you touched a little bit on it. And one thing that I want also to reiterate, that's something that I've said many times and I'm, I'll just keep saying this, it is not about dieting. I do not believe in diet. I believe in you finding a sustainable way of um, nourishing your body, nourishing it for real and not just eating uh, empty type of uh, foods. And we're talking about dense nutrition. Right. So I think for me, relearning the art of eating is something that I have so much love for and also bringing a lot of variety and but as well, bringing in that limitation. There is a limit. to. Yes, you can have your dessert, too. And that's why I brought Carla here on the second week of our uh, challenge, because probably if you are on your first week and you never tried to cut refined sugar that's something that we have suggested in the challenge right you try to cut refined sugar as much as you can and you probably are missing it and it's normal because that's what your microbiome that's what your bug right and dr carla can hear last week and she talked about the little different soldiers and bugs that we have in our body and we are basically full like all microbiome right bugs mm -hmm. so but that's what your bugs are wanting that's what they desire because that's why usually feed it and i'm gonna get into now why it's important for you to know i feel like sugar sugar is kind of considered kind of like a poison right uh and the reason why and this is why it's still connected to the metabolic reset is um there is a, a molecules made of fructose and glucose when you eat sugar and the way that our body breaks it down when we metabolize sugar our liver turns that energy into fat and liver fat causes all kinds of different different metabolic uh, diseases 
And if you think about it, right, so the way that if you're eating too much sugar, the body stops responding properly to this insulin. Your pancreas start just pumping insulin into your system. And then eventually that tired pancreas will break down. And that's what causes that high sugar levels all day, right? That one keeps you aging faster, but also um, you can even develop type two diabetes. So it is important that we have an understanding of the, 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 the reasons why when we talk about cutting refined sugar is mainly because of that. And diabetes today is something that unfortunately globally is kind of like a, a an epitome, yeah? like the pandemic of diabetes that's what's going on in the world um and i want to bring dj to talk a little bit about when he starts coaching his clients how is your recommendation with sugar and how was that for you were, were you ever into sugar were you did you have to change some habits too how did that work uh actually for the longest time i had the anyone who knew me or knows me crazy addiction to sugar right but it's also because i don't have a salty umami type flavor profile i don't like any kind of chips anything but salt i can care less about so for me to get calories in i've always been big on sugar i used to walk around and just eat packages of sun patch kit or sour patch kids and skittles all day long i mean it, it was i was always on my feet and moving around so it, it made sense i mean when it when it comes to foods a lot of times with my clients i'm a lot more much more strict with when they're eating foods as opposed to what they're eating. And let me explain by that. Everything you eat, calories are fuel, okay? Now, the way I view food is I don't think necessarily food is necessarily bad for you. I don't think there are really any bad foods. The reason is, is because if I had a choice between starving or eating a Twinkie, I'll eat Twinkies just to survive, right? So in some way, it does have a net benefit. What matters is how is it working on your system, right? How is it working on your gut biome? How is it interacting with your fat levels, right? Now, we've understood that when it comes to carbohydrates, a very, very small percentage of carbohydrates actually get stored as fat because when you eat carbs, a lot of times it just pushes the excess calories, just push more of the fat or the dietary fat you had that day into actual fat storages, right? And I think when it comes to sugar, people have a bad relationship with when they're eating it, right? We all know it's fine to eat sugar before you go run a marathon, before you do some sort of physical effort because that postprandial glycemia, which is basically where your blood glucose spikes up after eating it, it can be useful for fast or, you know, long duration exertions of energy, right? So when we run a marathon, carb loading is a natural thing to do prior to a marathon because you're going to need that energy as you move forward. But if I'm going to carb load or eat a bunch of sugar before I sit down and go to sleep, it's not really going to help me, right? So instead of really demonizing foods for my clients, I just tell them, hey, look, let's investigate when you need it throughout the day. So me and myself, the only sugar I have all day long is I'll eat like one Pop-Tart before I go to the gym. Why? Because it helps to give me a little extra energy before I go to the gym, but it gives me a chance to use that sugar to my benefit for performance, which means I can get more reps in, more sets in, and it's useful, and my body's not going to store it as fat. But if I'm going to eat a Pop-Tart before I go to sleep, your body is revving up with energy, and then it's like, hey, we're ready to go, we're ready to go, and you sit down, fine, I guess we'll store it, right? So I think there's always going to be a better way to consume energy, and so when I talk to my clients about nutrient timing, these fats, proteins, or carbohydrates, when they have it throughout the day, it's more important than exactly what they're having, to an extent. Amazing. Yeah, we get it. So we can have your sugar, right? Obviously you can. But once, maybe in the beginning stages of you re-educating your palate, here's my um, train of thought. If you know that if you have a dessert, that is raw, made with sweet with dates, right? And it kind of gives you the same kick or the same energy that a pop tart would give you. But the difference is there's so much more goodness in that date sweetened raw dessert. You know what I mean? Sure. So and it is re-educating, re uh, but you don't know if you're not aware of why. Why would I choose a raw dessert instead of whatever? A brand of sugary things that I take, right? Maybe for convenience, yeah. Maybe because it's cheaper, um, and well, for a myriad of, of reasons why people choose that. But if you learn how to make it, 
I promise you, you're going to go for what Carla teaches. Because here's the thing, once you know, you can go back, right? If you know, you know. So, and, and the processed diet, uh, the processed food uh, issue that we have nowadays, it's huge. So one of the things that I talk to Carla a lot about, Carla has been here, Dr. Carla, not Chef Carla, but she's been here many times. And we talked about how for people to have uh, a good relationship with food, the best, one of the best things is for them to learn how to cook. And, and you start be, like creating this relationship with food. So if you are a parent, start getting kids to cook with you. So as a parent, that's something that we absolutely love to do together. And my kid, uh, Addie at the time, was with me doing Carlos' course. So, and, and that's something that they create that relationship and you start from there. And even when you're cooking foods, the smell of the food that you're cooking, your body starts producing the appropriate enzymes to break it down. So it's, it's pretty cool, right? When you start making that connection, but yes, you can have your, your sugar. I do have a trainer here that was talking about that the other day with us. He goes, I, I can have, he loves the, you know, the Kinder Bueno that we all love. We all used to love when we were little. Remember those in Brazil, it's huge. So he said, I can have that, you know, but I can, fit it into what makes sense. And he said, I don't eat this before bed. I do this at the most active part of my day. Yeah. Um, so let's bring a little bit of the, Carla, what was the, what's the best thing for people that want to switch? So I, 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 I came to a course, obviously, right? Mm -hmm. But what is your like, like some easy, simple tips for people to, to, to maybe start the switch? I feel education is huge, right? Like learning, uh, find a couple recipes. And nowadays we have a myriad of recipes online. So you can just Google raw vegan desserts and you're going to find something that is simple and easy to make and quick. And I feel like if you get a couple of things that you really enjoy, um, having those on hand all the time, you know, I always have desserts in my freezer. So if I feel like having dessert, it's always there. Um, and I feel like something that really um, was huge for me when I first transitioned was I cleaned out my pantry and I removed the things that I didn't want to have. And I think that's key also, because if you're adding an extra layer of difficulty for you, between you and whatever you desire, but you know it's not that great for you, you're you're most likely not gonna leave your house to go to the grocery store and have dessert if it's not in your freezer. But if it's in your freezer and you can just reach out for it, you're gonna eat it more often. Um, so I think that's a big one too. I don't have in my house things that I don't want to consume ever. And if I want to cheat, I allowed myself to do it when I go out with friends or in, when I'm in situations that I don't need, that, that I can't really choose or, you know, I just allow myself. Um, so I feel like learning a couple recipes, you can just have those on hand all the time and it's going to make your life easier. And you can start by sweetening them with more sugar. And eventually, if you can gradually reduce the amount that you put, um, I love that I, I usually get the compliment by a lot of people that my desserts are not too sweet. And I'm always scared when I make them for normal eaters because you never know, you know, I, I can't eat refined sugar anymore because my taste buds just can't handle it. I just, I, I really can't. It, it's too sweet for me. Um, so if you challenge yourself to go without refined sugar for a little bit of time, I promise you, your taste buds will adapt fairly quickly. So give yourself a week, two weeks, and, and challenge yourself to make a couple desserts that you can use, you know, dates to sweeten it, or a little bit of maple syrup, or even monk fruit, if you don't want the higher glycemic index. And and have those on hand and substitute those. So I feel like that's a good, it, education is key. Yeah, I'm putting on the comment here, 
some um, some tips that you suggested. So basically, get rid of the not sorry not so great ingredients, right? Yeah. So if it's there, you're probably gonna reach out for it. Mm-hmm. Then some of the foods that you know you don't want to eat, if you don't have it at home, then you won't eat it. Sub for maple monk fruit and date syrup. Um, that's a good start. And I also posted here on the comments. Uh, I study. This is something that is super um, important. I remember when I was in uh, school in San Diego. Um, this was huge. Uh, it's very, and I was kind of surprised actually that. Um, sorry if it, it's a trigger for people, but it's the reality. They say that uh, in the world there's like a staggering number of young women that are anorexic and bulimic. I feel like it's like half percent of all women and 1% of all women either are one of the other. This is huge, okay? And I noticed, uh, and that shocked me when I got to San Diego, that people, uh, the, the, the girls, it was very common for them to know that they were, they were have, they had eating disorders. And that was something that was like, okay. So they would actually do it together. And um, I was shocked, right? So that was a reality that I didn't know existed because I hadn't been exposed to that in Brazil. So when I left here, went to America, and I was like, whoa. And it happens here, too. It's just the age that I was in, and I moved. So it just so happened that I was hanging out with them that were like in their, they're in college, right? So I posted the the study here that you see and this study is about um the the connection of the college it's all college students they entered like they they did a study with about like a little over two thousand students and they all said that weight was a concern am i here still sorry my wi-fi is going a little crazy um yeah and and they all said that um weight was a concern for 43% of them. So what this creates is you connect food with a lot of anxiety and sometimes depression because it's a worry. It's a constant worry. And then the food doesn't become life. It actually becomes death, right? So, and this is why I keep bringing these topics to the table. We've got to have a good relationship with food. And I've been in a place where I, I didn't have a good relationship with food, right? Mm-hmm. So today I'm the strongest I've been. And I shared this last week is it took me a good 10 years to find a place where I feel like this is sustainable, you know? Eat with pleasure, but also with intention. Um, so for you guys, where, when, what happened that made you feel that, okay, I'm in a sustainable place now. I feel that this this is a good flow for me. What do you guys want to share? I can go first. Um, coming from a house, you know, I grew up with uh, my mom really setting the menu for the week and the weekend. Uh, so we have like um, lunch at home. We didn't really go out much to eat back in Brazil. We, she had a, you know, someone that cooked for us and she was a, she also, she's an awesome, uh, you no know, cooker. So she's just, we just have like great and exposed to many different foods. So I grew up, um, having a relationship with food that try, even if I didn't like, didn't like it, whatever she was putting on the table, you're going to try, you're not going to leave the table without trying. And I think right now, uh, when I moved to the United States and I was just trying to find, you know, myself and who I, what I want, what I wanted to do, um, I was actually hooked with a granola and yogurt. This is actually an inside joke with my mom and, and Marcus and, and even Yaya today, that uh, when she came to visit me, it was just yogurt and granola in my, in my refrigerator because I didn't know how to cook because I have someone to cook for me my whole life pretty much. So then I would start finding, okay, maybe I'm just going to do the basic, no, the rice and beans and the meat. And I guess um, doing that path all the way to today that I'm definitely more aware uh, what I want to eat and uh, ingredients, uh, especially this past couple of years, I'm very aware of ingredients. And then um, I, was, uh, I was not eating meat for almost three years before being pregnant or getting pregnant with Yaya. That was my choice. 
but I did meet, I did miss the, the meat. So when I was, the day that I found out that I was pregnant, my body craved for, for the meat. And I was like, okay, let's listen to the body. Let's listen to what it's asking for. And I surrender. And I, you know, so I think my relationship is like, I want to know more. And thank you, um, Chef Carla. Thank you, DJ. I'm learning so much. And Pam and, you know, Teddy and um, Christina. But I have a really, I, I think I have a pretty good relationship with food. And I think I'm pretty balanced. I think the hardest thing is to find the balancing between I can, oh no, uh, give, I can have this today and uh, and not a much, like trying to balance out. But now that we know um, ingredients like, you know, refined sugar and things like that, that we didn't thought about it before. Now we can actually, okay, so let's choose this instead of this. Let's have this instead of this. It's a little bit different, but it's still delicious. It's still good. So, yeah, it's, I think it's a journey for each one of us, right? Uh, food and, and weight and all of that. Um, so I think with uh, today we are definitely more aware of things and we have definitely are exposed to more information and more people like you know, DJ and uh, Chef Carla and Dr. Carla too that we kind of like, okay, so let's be conscious about our choices and um, what I'm going to put inside this temple because our body is our temple. And like we say, we're going to carry with us whatever we go. So, um, yeah, so let's just be more conscious about what we are putting in, right? And um, and we have so many tools and we have so many supplements. We have so many good things today. So, yeah, so that's my experience. Love it. Well, when did it become sustainable for you? For me, yeah. it was it was actually um, when I when I understood, you know, when I was start, start taking supplements. I think when I turned 40, 40, 40, six years ago, when I started my journey uh, with Otera almost seven years ago, I was start like you know more being more aware of um, supplementation and things like that. I was not really care about before. And now when I'm starting like, educating myself and like, oh, what is this? What am I going to put it in now? What my body needs now? I need more, I need more energy. I need to be, uh, you know, more energy. You know, I think it's all about having more energy. So um, where can I get the, the energy to keep, you know, living my life, doing things that I wanted to do? My daughter is growing and having energy for her, for myself. So I think it was a, when I would start being really into the supplementation six years ago amazing and teddy you're gonna share yeah so i was gonna say that i think i think my relationship with food has definitely it's really improved since i became a mom um several years ago <laughs> half my life ago um when my kids I started noticing changes with my kids when they were babe, my son, especially like when I would give him uh, chocolate milk, for example. So I started really intuitively as a mom started noticing that how, what was going on with my kids when they started eating things and to make a long story short, their school started integrating a nutrition program, which um, in Hawaii, it's called the, uh, Kokua Foundation. So they grow your own garden, right? Um, so when I lived in California, the roots of the Kokua Foundations, the growing the garden, um, they started doing that like in 2000, early 2000. Um, the roots are um, based out of these two women in Manhattan Beach that started doing it in the schools. So that started my journey about just being more aware and um, conscious. And soon after I started becoming a yoga instructor and again, started just learning when, the cues, like how I feel full um, and integrating this, you know, like raw and natural, more sustainable that happened, you know, same journey with, with Susanna, like, you know, eight, seven, eight or seven years ago, you know, starting to learn how to restore your gut health and doing cleanses and restores. And then the meal pan plan that you put out, Pam, um, you know, I've 
follow that. It's not new to me. It's new to maybe some of the other people that are new on this call and doing the reset, but it is truly sustainable. Like I very rarely eat any kind of granola bars or anything like that. Um, I like to read labels, you know, try to stay away from um, those different seed oils and different, the different types of sweeteners out there. Um, you know, I'm definitely more, that's made me more aware. And I think for my three kids, my three kids are all pretty much adults now. The youngest is 20, but um, they all are pretty, pretty aware. Um, they're all pretty lean, you know, they have good healthy habits with as far as like exercise and you know, mental health. And I think that, again, that this community, I owe it to this community of people just, you know, learning uh, different things from, you know, from exercising to, you know, to food. It's a whole, you know, the body, there's a whole picture to this puzzle, you know, a lot of different pieces. So. Yeah, I love it. And uh, you touched on the, the parent thing again, right? Um, we, I just talked to somebody yesterday and I said, maybe you don't do it for yourself, but you do it for your kids, you know? And I think a lot of the times when we become parents, um, that, that is the gift of you understanding that you want to be here for them, right? And you want to be here healthy. You don't want to be here not having the energy or the stamina or endurance to, to do things with them. Um, and I just added here, uh, eating is a learned behavior. So again, you know, as a, as a parent, what they see is what they do, not what you tell them. And so again, get the kids in the kitchen. And if you're an adult, get yourself in the kitchen. Go buy some stuff you don't know every week. Buy something that you look at and you're like, I have no idea what this is. I saw one time a Buddha fruit, I think, or a vegetable. It looks like a hand. Have you guys seen that? And I was like, I have no idea what this is. But maybe it was a monk fruit. I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and, and make this. I don't know. So I looked it up and I made it. It was delicious. And every week we try to bring something different for the family to try. Does it mean they're going to love it? Probably not, but they're going to be exposed to it. And, you know, the little soldiers in your brain for Brian, they will be chat with it. And then they'll, they'll have that uh, recorded in their, in their um, microbiome, right? Another thing here is DJ as a trainer. How many times do you tell your client, maybe you're thirsty, not hungry. The same part of the brain that, makes you thirsty is the part of the brain that makes you hungry, right? So is that a recommendation that you give to them? So, but I'll, yeah, I was moving it for uh, Susanna so she can speak nice and clear and I can echo. Um, yeah, so when it comes to obviously hydration, when it comes to eating, right? It activating the same center of the brain. A lot of times people just do things out of boredom. And, you know, we've talked about before on the podcast, I recommend to my clients that they drink about 15 to 20 ounces of water. Oh, your sound is disappearing. Speak, please. No sound. Yeah, he, his voice just started fading. He started fading gradually. <laughs> How about that? I got a comment. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Okay. That's it. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, so, so what I was saying basically is I'll recommend to my clients that if you drink about 16 to 20 ounces prior to any meal, just drinking a bunch of water, what's going to happen is that actual volume of water is going to help to stretch your stomach, right? So a lot about that stretching sensation helps to shut off that appetite feeling, right? So doing something preemptive also makes them less likely to want to overconsume food because they're just trying to fill up all that empty space when they're famished. Right. So I think that plays a major role. And I think that, you know, when it comes to being very strategic with their water, I think that's very beneficial because I think that if you can plan your water throughout the day to where it ends up being something that supplements your diet, helps to supplement you staying on track with your eating, supplement your hunger cravings, I think that's extremely useful. Amazing. Yeah. So Dr. Ali that was here, she's a neuroscientist. She talked about that. She goes, hey, this thing place in your brain that tells you that you're hungry is the same place that tells you that you're thirsty. So many times the first thing that she said, hey, go drink some water. Maybe that will take care of that. Or we, uh, Chef Carla mentioned the density, the nutrition density of the food, right? So if you're eating 
empty calories, you tend to be hungrier faster. And if you're eating dense, dense nutrition type of foods, you're satiated for a longer time. And mm -hmm. so you're not craving, you don't have those cravings. Then we have the meta power advantage that is where I feel it's such a, an incredible tool for people to have a way to curb cravings. And the reason why that happens is because of the nutrient density of that sachet. So that's one of the main reasons why, you know, and people say, hey, I cut, like, if you see my stories today, I have a couple comments there from people that told me, like, I, I don't feel like I want to eat that sugar that I usually eat or drink the extra caffeine, caffeinated drink that I usually have. Um, and that's because your body has enough nutrition to work with. So and that's the way it's supposed to be working. Yeah. And bringing the water back into the conversation, hydration, super key. So on the 1st of uh, February, I am so excited that we're going to have this. This is the electrolyte and it is, it has baobab in it. Chef Carlos is going to love this because baobab is something that we know about in Brazil because, you know, we have it here. We have the powder that we use a lot. So it's a great um, hydration region that also has tons of different uh, vitamins in it, including vitamin A. And it is abundant here. But in the U.S., I've never seen a product with baobab. So, and there's also 75 different deep sea minerals, um, as well as calcium, magnesium, potassium, and sodium. So if you are active, especially, this is for you. Uh, and if you're not active, get this. Most of us are dehydrated. So this is for you too. And it makes you drink a little bit more water because it flavors the water also, right? So you get some incredible nutrition through your food, but also you can get good nutrition through what you're drinking. And you get hydrated in, in a very um, efficient way, not just drinking water and peeing it out, right? So some of the, the benefits of calcium, we all know, but one of the ones that I really love is connected to especially women's health, okay? So if you are experiencing free menstrual symptoms, uh, that's, that could be connected to calcium and magnesium serum levels that are low. So sometimes you have very easy fix and you just don't know, right? So that's why we keep um, bringing some of this information here for you. And another thing that's important too, like it has to be, you know, accessible. So this is, uh, Patty asked me right before we got on here. So what's the price? So this is it. It's thirty nine fifty, and you have 30 uh, sachets in it and this will be released and launched we'll have it in hawaii ready to pour pick up on the first of february okay two flavors there lemon lime and wild strawberry and this is part of our meta power system um the metabolic system so this is i feel that we are even more so gearing towards uh, performance and i truly believe that every human being would love to perform at their peak right and DJ, as a trainer, what do you consider peak performance? What do I consider peak performance is in like the ability for someone to complete certain tasks or you mean they're doing something very specific? Generally, what, what, are, you, uh, what are you asking? Connected to the type of lifestyle you live. If you look at DJ's Instagram, if you've never done that, please do it. That to me looks, smells, breathes, ex like exhales. Um, peak performance, right? So what, what does that look like? Okay, yeah, so if you're looking at the, the IG page, so that would be more of, you know, I think that if you're trying to honestly be the best person you can in the world, then your evolution of your mindset, how you treat people, it doesn't just stop there. It's also the amount of care you take into your body, right? So if you're honestly listening to yourself, are you the kind of person who's only lifting heavy weights because all that matters to you is the number on the board? Are you also skipping your mobility? Are you skipping your cardiovascular? Are you skipping your nutrition, right? So for me, a lot about what I teach my clients is you want to be able to excel all of them. Now, is that easy? Of course not. It's very difficult, but so is becoming the best version of yourself. But at some point you got to lean into it, right? You can't tell yourself, hey, I want to be the best person I can be to be an example to my family, people around me who know me, right? For every one person that I influence, they influence 10 others who look at them and say, wow, they're really on top of their stuff. They really got their life together. To do that, I don't want you to have holes in your game. So then I don't have holes in my game. 
I don't want someone to look at me and say, oh, well, this guy, he just lifts heavy weights. He doesn't have good mobility. No, I'm sure it's better than yours. I don't say that to brag. I just say it because I take a lot of pride in it, right? Oh, that guy only does mobility. Well, he's not strong and he doesn't fight. Well, I learned martial arts too. And I'm also lifting heavy weights. And I'm also working on my cardiovascular. I'm also running all the time, every single day, basically. Also, my nutrition is dialed in. So the only way that I feel comfortable asking certain things out of my clients is if I'm also congruent in what I believe by showing them my philosophy through how I live my life, right? So I think that, you know, what's really amazing with all the meta power stuff that we're doing here is you're teaching people that hydration, health, overall well-being is not just single faceted. There's a lot of variables. And yes, it's a lot of things to think about. But what? So what? At some point, you got to step into the plate. At some point, you got to say, you know what? I'm ready to take on a task that's bigger than me, and I'm going to do it. I'm going to excel. Well, then you're going to have more responsibility on your plate than you're ready to deal with, which is like anything else in life. If you were already ready to do it, it wouldn't help to grow you. It wouldn't be growth because you already know how to do it. The simple fact that it might be too much, that challenge allows you to rise to the challenge and create something better for yourself, right? So I think telling people bit by bit as these months go by, because you have a fantastic strategy this year, giving people low-hanging fruit, small things to work on to get themselves into a routine of being the best person they can be and hitting all those markers, I think is absolutely fabulous. So you coming out with the electrolytes, that's another thing too, right? Hydration is not just drinking water, it's hydrating yourself. And people say, oh, well, what does that mean? Well, let me help you. Electrolytes, your sodiums, your potassiums, your magnesiums, knowing how to do things helps people to optimize who they are because they start to realize, hey, in order for me to be better than who I am right now, there's a lot more for me to learn. Just like uh, Carla was saying, there's a lot more for you to learn right now. Fantastic. Let me show you. Oh, I love that. Um, so 75% of the population is deficient in magnesium. How's that? At least. So, yes, right? Um, so small tools, just like I said, small, easy, simple tools for us to be able to be more efficient and therefore more successful in what we're trying to accomplish. And in this situation here, it's for us to be healthier. If you're healthier, you're happier. If you're happier, that's all you want, right? At the end of the day, humans want to be happy. That's all we want. So, Chef Carla, I'm going to put a comment here that is connected to a tool. So, if you are craving sugars at this point, that's why I, call, I asked her to, to be on here with us. Um, remember that these desserts are made with nutrient-dense whole foods and also lots of fiber, protein, that not only promotes gut health, but also makes you feel cooler for longer. Um, and you have a little surprise gift, right, for our challengers? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. You have a little surprise gift for our challengers. You're gonna share uh, a recipe with us? Yes, so one recipe that I find really easy is a chocolate avocado mousse. And I think, I don't know if a lot of people have made this before. I find this just so simple. It's rich in magnesium <laughs> and cacao, right? Um, and using dates as a sweetener. So I I mean, I, I don't know if you want me to just write a recipe here for them no. or if you just want we me gonna, to. No, we're gonna put it in our group. So okay, if got you it. guys want, to be in the group, everybody's welcome, but you have to be part of the challenge. For you to be part of the challenge, you need to have uh, either the whole metapower system or at least the advantage and the probiome. Okay, that's the only things we ask for people to have. So you have results. Um, mm -hmm. And from what we have seen so far, there's only been a week. We have incredible feedback from everybody that's part of the challenge. So we're gonna put that recipe there in the group for you to make sure that you have a little sweet uh, fix there for this time during the challenge. And Carla, uh, for your courses, so how, how do people access your courses? So you can go on rawchefcarla.com and you can see my online courses there. And if you are local to Florida, you, I can also teach you private lessons, um, which are my favorite, because I just find it so fun to play in the kitchen. I come to your house, I bring all of the equipment, and I can show you how to make delicious 
foods altogether. We don't need to work only on desserts, but raw foods. That's my specialty. And and it's re- like I said, I think education is key in learning how it, it's just taking responsibility over what you're putting in your body. Because the reality is when you go out to eat, you never know what's really in your food. I love it. And when I did the course with you, it was an in-person course. Yes. And we made five different chocolate desserts that were divine. <laughs> and we took them all home. That was such an awesome yeah. gift. And Addie got to make the little balls. She got to mix some of the stuff that we, it was amazing. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I recommend if you're there, go, go check it out. Um, and DJ, how do people find, do you have courses? What do you have available? Uh, do you have um, mentorship? How does it work for people that want to work with you? All the above. So if they go on to my IG and they click the link inside the bio, you guys will see, you guys can work with me one-on-one to where I do everything's personalized and customized from everything from nutrition all the way down to what you're working out every single day. I also do a lot with mentality and performance psychology so because I know for my, the majority of my demographic is male. So for guys, there's a certain way we got to speak to guys. We can't really hold their hands because guys don't really respond to that. Guys respond better with the plan of action. And so my site is every, definitely set up to where I have different programs that are already set for you, whether it be, hey, I have full access to a gym. I'm only working out at home. I have nothing all together. I have some spare dumbbells, whatever it might be. So if you, anything you guys might need, if you go onto that link inside my bio, you guys will click. You guys will see all sorts of programs. Um, even discounts for different vendors, um, but just everything you need to get your life together via fitness. I absolutely love it. And for Christina, Teddy, Susanna, and I, we all work together. We're part of the same team, and we're friends. We've been together for years now, Susanna and I almost for like two decades, Teddy for about a decade, and uh, Mm -hmm. so it's Christina. And we work in doTERRA. We are all wellness consultants and this has become a passion and a mission to keep bringing tools for people to be able to make a change and many times to really transform their lives for the better and thank you so much for your presence your time and you that joined us on this uh, podcast and live and if you are on the podcast if you want to see the things we've shared just hop onto either YouTube or Instagram, and it's all either on my feed or Teddy's or uh, Christina and Susanna and DJ. And on YouTube, you'll find in all of us, all of our accounts as well. And our company's YouTube is called Collective Glow because that's the idea, right? We all can shine together. Thank you all so much. Have a beautiful night, day, morning, whatever you are. Aloha. Thank you. Okay. Aloha, Thank you. Thank See you next Thank Monday. You. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys. Bye.